Destiny. I say amen again. Sister Ariel, thank you so much. Church family, I don't have a long message. We've been already inspired by the participants in the mermaid triathlon. Amen. But I do want to give you just a couple of announcements that just came to me just now. Uh, and they, and uh, they, I guess, have to be made now because there's not another time. But there is a wonderful, wonderful baby shower for Sister Francine next week. It's next week, right, Sister Francine? I thought it was on Sunday. Oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yes, uh, it's uh, next week. Um, and so uh, we, we definitely uh, want to support that. And congratulations to uh, Sister Francine. Also, uh, those who are of the seven of the steering committee, I just need to meet with you uh, for a quick second in the pastor's office right after the message. Amen. Just the seven. And next, uh, I'm sorry, tomorrow is a church business meeting. Amen. Let's celebrate. That's everyone's favorite time. Church business meeting is tomorrow at one o'clock. The agenda is not long, so we shouldn't be there for uh, that length of a time, uh, considerable length of time. Uh, but uh, we need you there. I want to discuss a couple things. Uh, nothing super pressing, but we need uh, you there as normal. So that's tomorrow at one o'clock. I'll be there. Hopefully, we can get out very quickly. Um, and you will, of course, receive a financial report, which we are doing well, and reports on other things uh, going on in the church, which we are doing well. Um, and uh, we need to discuss also a couple of things dealing uh, with uh, uh, American Canyon. For those, uh, we need to discuss that and a couple of things. But uh, church is doing well uh, financially and otherwise. Uh, always room for improvement, but we just need to discuss that. One o'clock, if you are a member, if you are a member, those who are honorary members, this is one of the, this is one of the perks that you can't participate in because you're honorary members. So we invite all the honorary members to just become full pledge members so we can all be part of the business meeting. Amen? Amen. I know it. I know it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Church family, the, the, the message of inspiration uh, title, because I am big on titles, is time, temperance, and management. That's what I termed it. Time, temperance, and management. And of course, it's no secret that the Berea participation of the Mermaid Triathlon helped inspire this message. And I want to thank uh, Kelvin for um, reading our scripture reading. It's uh, That was very short, which is unlike uh, your pastor, but uh, amen. But I just, for the sake of emphasis, want to read one verse in that pericope. This is uh, 3 John, is what uh, he read one. I only want to read one verse. 3 John And I just want to uh, read this one verse. This is it's 3 John 1. There's only one chapter. Uh, 3 John 1. And uh, I want to read this one, this one verse, which is verse 2. <laughs> this is my, my uh, feeling for everyone, as is also mine, I'm sure. It says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things. You've seen this text before and heard it before. And here it is. Here's the point that I'm focusing on. And be in what? Be in health, good health, just as your soul prospers. I, I love that. I love, I love how John makes the distinction between health and your soul, which is uh, more of a metaphor of your spirituality. I like how he has made that distinction, which I will in this message. But um, prosper in good health just as your soul prosper. Many of you are very strong in your spirituality. You have matured in your spirituality. You've gone through some tough times, I know. Times in your spirituality have been tough, but through the tough times, you've learned, you've grown, and your spirituality is strong and mature. He's indicating that if your health is not there, his wish is that your health is also there as your soul prospers. I'm dealing with time, temperance, and management. Father, we ask for understanding on this particular point Thank you for what you've done in the person of Jesus Christ. Thank you for all who have lifted up the name of Christ thus far. I give this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Church family, Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 through 11. We know that, right? I, I'm sure you know it by heart because you're Sabbath keepers. Am I correct? What's it? Rem uh, say it with me. 
remember <laughs> to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the is the Sabbath in it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy maidservant, nor stranger. For in six days the Lord and the sea and all that in them is, says King James. <laughs> Rest the, that's right. And how I remember in our churches uh, that that would sometimes just be repeated at the beginning of the worship service. And that's how many people it's inculcated in the, in the mind. As you know, church family, the Mosaic law was given to Israel. That includes the Ten Commandments are in total 618 laws. It was given to Israel. Paul says it was given so that transgression will multiply, Romans 5, 20, and Galatians 3. But one thing that you will take note, that in that law, it is simply a reminder of the Sabbath. And that is because, church family, you notice everything else is a thou shalt not, etc. That is because, in part, that the Sabbath was not given to Israel. Amen. The Sabbath was given to mankind. There is a clear distinction. Just like marriage wasn't given just to Israel. Amen. Marriage is given to mankind. Sabbath is given to mankind. That's why the Lord said remember, because they had forgotten when they were enslaved in Egypt and uh, Pharaoh was treating them bad. They had forgotten all about that blessing of the Sabbath. But it goes all the way back to Genesis 2. And in Exodus, it reminds us, once again, church family, it reminds us that God calls, watch this now, for one-seventh of your time. That's right. One-seventh of your time. And he calls for one-seventh of your time to rest and to spend some time with him. I'm, 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 when, I, when I say that, I mean exclusive time with him. Rest and spend exclusive time. Now, this message is not about the Sabbath, so I'm not going to go into that much about how we have put things on the Sabbath that really shouldn't be there. Sabbath, for many people, have become so burdensome that you are basically working on that day as you do all the other days. It is amazing how much burdensome issues we have put on the Sabbath. The Sabbath as taught in the scriptures until it was messed up by the Sadducees and the Pharisees, God to mankind says the Sabbath is for rest. There's nothing wrong. Church family, resting. I know some of us need rest. You wake up in the morning and you're just running ragged all throughout uh, Monday through Friday, some of you Sunday through Friday. You're looking for a day of rest. You're looking for a day where you can say, I'm not going to wake up early. I'm going to sleep in. You're looking for a day where you don't have all these responsibilities uh, that you are preparing for. You're looking for a day of rest. We have made this day of rest to a day of more work and then call it Sabbath. But this is, this is another message uh, in and of itself. We will deal with that. And I want you to know here at Berea, we are bringing out, we will be bringing out certain programs that helps us to understand that mentally. Sleeping Sabbath is one of them. Amen. That's right. That's one of them. But we are, we are along that line. I'm going to tell you something. I'm just going to put it out there. And i got to get back to my message. There is nothing wrong with having church service on Friday night. That's right. And so then on the day of Saturday, what we call Sabbath, because uh, Sabbath does begin Friday night, what we call Friday night. That day, you sleep in, wake up when you want to relax, maybe spend some time with your family, spend some exclusive time with the Lord in the Word. You don't have responsibilities that you normally have. And you rest it out. But we'll do that another time. The point that I'm making here is that God calls for one-seventh of your time. That's it. One-seventh of your time to rest. I want you to notice this, church family. He does not call for all your time to rest. This is important. He doesn't say all your time. As a matter of fact, he says six days you are to labor. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> six days is labor. Yeah, labor. Labor and employment uh, is the same thing. Employ the six days, and it, uh, in part, I mean, you can you can labor and not be employed, but if you're employed, you um, are normally speaking your labor. But but he's speaking of some type of labor for six days, but one day of rest. He didn't say every day you need to labor. Every day you need to rest. 
Some days you need to rest. Other days you need to work. Amen. So, or labor. You need to labor. So if you are not laboring, I would suggest, uh, you know, if, if, you, if there are reasons, critical reasons why you're not, I understand. But um, if not, I would suggest try to find something of which you can labor. Something with your hands, something with your mind, something. Uh, what's, what's that old adage, uh, an idle mind? Yeah, don't sit around all day long and hang out with your friends all day long. There is time for that, and it's important. That's mine. It's time, temperance, and manner. There's time for that. But don't spend all your day doing that, and, 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 and you're not laboring. Come on now. Let, let's, let's do something. Let's, let's, see, let's develop our minds and our abilities. Six days of labor. But he says one day, that's it, one-seventh is rest. One-seventh is to spend exclusive time with him. That's it. Now, I'm going to put that on the shelf. Boom. Malachi 3.10 reminds us of the blessings of Israel remitting 10% of its increase. Amen. And notice it is 10%, although Moses indicates that it is God who gives you the power to make wealth. That's Deuteronomy 8.10. It is God who gives you the power to make wealth. Although he's giving that power, 10% goes to his church, which he is the leader of. That, that, that's what he indicates. Now you have a good 90% to do with what you need to do. Buy your clothes. If you have a family, take care of your family. <laughs> Maybe you want to go on vacation. I mean, you, have, you, can, you can use your money other ways. Maybe you want to put in retirement. I don't know. But 10% is going now to church. Now, here, here, here's where I'm going. You got one-seventh that God calls for rest. One-tenth or 10% calls for money. That's it. What that teaches me, church family, is the importance of time, temperance, and management. I know some of those words are curse words in today's time. Time, temperance, and management. In today's time, I think you would agree to me, in the United States and a few other countries, we seem to be too busy, too busy to understand time, temperance, of, and, and management. It, 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 it's, it's like we have more things to do or more things that we feel we have to do. And what's, what is, what's becoming so funny is that it, it seems like we are putting out more production but gaining less results. You're working longer, but your pay is the same. People now are being required uh, at many places to even work on a weekend. You can't even get one day off. They have you working seven days, not even one day off. And they entice it, of course, by getting paid more. But some, some is just required. If you don't do it, they'll you know, find someone else who will. But it is, I mean, we are, we are having to work more and more and more. As a result, this is my opinion as I see it, as a result, critical things are being neglected. Now, I, I, this phenomenon is not seen in such a stark fashion in some other areas of the country. If I go home to Panama, my parents are soon to go home to Panama for two weeks. They're flying back home, see family, etc. They're leaving uh, next week. They'll be gone for two weeks. When I fly home, I see this. When I fly to Jamaica, I see this. When I fly to Hawaii, I see this. The culture is more relaxed. I mean, the, 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 the hustle and bustle that we are used to is not there. I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just things are just a lot more just relaxed. And, and people seem to be just, uh, seems to be, they, they may be, I haven't seen the stats, but more healthy, just, just relaxing. But in today's culture, here in the U.S., on the mainland, we are very hectic, very busy, and as a result, things are being neglected. No one can spend time with the family. You don't have time for yourself. And you don't have time for your health. Too busy to spend time with your family, right? It's, 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 it's just getting busy. Too busy to spend alone time. It's, it's almost like a curse word to just have alone time. Like you can't do it. You, somehow you got to be doing something. You can't just sit down and relax and meditate or do nothing or maybe read a book or maybe watch a show. You can't do that. You feel like you always have to be doing something, and our health is failing. Certainly, medical science is helping us out a lot. I want to thank God for that. <clears throat> health is breaking down, my opinion. 
my opinion. Health is, and, and, and I want you to, health as a rubric is broken down into many categories. You got mental health, which I talked about the last time um, I preached, mental health. You have, of course, biological health. Of course, you have subcategories within that. You got social, you have diet. And when I say diet, I'm speaking of uh, uh, the way you eat as a lifestyle, not these binge dieting, or, you know, you diet uh, every three months. Uh, that, that's can be, that can be very, very dangerous um, in long-term effects. Uh, diet, exercise, and rest, it can keep breaking up into categories. And, and I want to say social is an important category. People, that's almost like a, a curse word. You can't, if you have time to hang out with your friends, it's, then you, you're not busy enough. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Yeah, that's right. That's ridiculous. You should have time to hang out with your friends, have time to hang out with your family. That's most important. Family and friends, but you, and time for yourself. It is important. I know today it's not that way, and of course you have all these um, technologies which allow you to <laughs> still get stuff done and not have the interaction. I think it's important. I love texting everybody here. I love it. I don't mind emailing. Amen. I'll check your Facebook page out. I'll do all of that, but nothing takes the place of just hanging out person to person. Social. They, 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 I mean, I can't go into the science of that right now. Critical, but... You know, things are failing because we're, just, we're just, just too busy, just too busy to do things. But today, <coughs> this message and what we heard from the group is focusing on health, mental and biological, by the way of exercise. That's, that's it. I mean, there's so much to talk about. There's not time enough uh, to do it. Um, we can bring in the experts. But I'm just talking about on a general plane, mental and biological health in the form of exercise. I want to make a few points, and then I want to close. Point number one, church family, I want to be clear. Even if you exercise, you will die. Okay, amen. All right. I, didn't, I wasn't sure if you knew that. Even if there ain't enough miles you can run, yeah, you will die. Okay? I want to make that point. Right. Exercise will not reverse or slow every single ailment that has been attack mankind. I want you to know that. I want you to know that, okay? But exercise, I mean, there's a lot to talk about. I'm just dealing with exercise, just that small group. But exercise will improve your life exponentially at the time frame that we have to live. It will improve, yeah, your health. It will improve your quality of life. It can improve your mind, the brain functioning. I mean, it, it, there's so much powerful impact to health. Uh, I, didn't, I, don't, I don't have time. I don't have time. And I'm not teaching here. I'm not teaching here when I'm talking about exercise. I when I'm talking about exercise. I'm not saying that every shape and every figure and every body should be the same. Yeah, there are many different shapes and sizes that are healthy, and there are many different shapes and sizes that are unhealthy. You would have to work it out with your doctor to find out which category you feel. But it does not mean everyone's going to look the same. We have seen amazingly skinny people who are sick. And we have seen amazingly skinny people who are healthy. Right? It, 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 you, this, that, that determination is best you do with your doctor no matter where you fall on the spectrum. I'm speaking in general. You got to customize it for your life. I'm speaking in general. There is something to be said about exercise. And so, like our triathlon victors, you want to choose some method of exercise, church family. I appreciate your time here for church and your work that you do and everything, but you want to choose some method. And there's various kinds. You can run, you can walk, you can, I mean, you, you know all of them. <laughs> you can hit the Stairmaster, you can hit the elliptical, uh, you can, I mean, if you if you don't want to spend a gym membership or buy one of the machines, you can walk outside. I don't know what you're going to do when it gets cold, but, or maybe you want to walk in the cold. I mean, you know, put on this stuff, whatever. Choose a method. Try to find time and start slowly and have reasonable expectations. Please don't start on Monday and be like, yeah, but I'm going to run a marathon on Wednesday. You definitely will be in some bad situation by there. You may have to sit down and go to the hospital. Dehydration, all kinds of things going on with you, body hurting. You are so sore, you can't even get back out there for another two weeks. I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just too much. You want to start slowly. You want to have reasonable expectations and choose a method or methods that you enjoy. 
Yeah, that's, that's, that's what you want to do. That's what you want to do. It is, it is critical, church family. It is critical um, in terms of quality of life, etc. And this is general. You need to customize it. You need to customize it for you. You and your doctor can do that. Or maybe if you are already educated enough, you may not need to, doctor. I don't know. And if you don't have health insurance, I want you to know that Obamacare has, <laughs> has he didn't pay me to say this, has been rolled out. It has been rolled out. Whether you like it or you don't, right, it is the law of the land. And you now have opportunity. If you do not have it, uh, now there is an opportunity. So, so, so there are ways of getting to the doctor and working these things out. But I want to make something critical. After I've, I, I've, I've put a fuse in of health and, and I want to you encourage, I think I've even talked with Mary and a few other people of having some kind of um, uh, like workout thing here at Berea. Not sure how exactly how to do that logistically, uh, but you know, it's just some workout thing. Maybe, we, maybe we'll record it in the back and put it on the website. And then when you're at home, you can click on the website and do it with the person in there. I don't know. You try to be like a Julia Michaels and, or one of them. So do something, but just something to, to, you know, for those who want to. We're, we're working on that. But what I want to be clear on, and this is what I'm closing with, what I want to be clear on is that although health is good, and I, I spoke specifically just on exercise in a very short time. There's so much involved in it. Although health is good, health, as is many other issues, listen to me, church, is not salvific. Oh, yeah. It's important. It can, it can help you out in the time that we have here. Uh, it can help you out in so many things. But I, I want to be clear, church family, health is not salvific. Like many other issues, it's not the same thing. You've heard me use the phrase, morality is not Christianity, nor is ethics, nor is good habits. None of that is Christianity. There isn't, you can't be healthy enough to be saved. It's, it's simply impossible. You can eat the best you can and eat the best things, stay in the environment. You know, I, I went to L.A. I love L.A. I do. I love it. But I have to say the air quality is not as good as it is over here. I get off the plane and my eyes are burning me and I'm like, man, you know, suddenly I have out until I came back home to northern and just things just cleared up. When I go to Leone Meadows, that is some good air. Oh, my goodness, that, that's some clean air. You can spend your whole life in Leone Meadows, eat food that only comes from Whole Foods or Berkeley Bowl. You can, I mean, you could do all that. And I promise you, it does not entitle you to heaven. Now, I talk about these things because they're important, but I do not want to mix it with salvation. Enough of that has been done. Enough t people and teachers and preachers have mixed morality with salvation or Christianity and pawns it off as the same thing. And then a hearer is there and they feel like, okay, I better do this so then I can be saved. Oh, because God may want me to do this. If I don't do it, he's going to take away his promise to save me. Church family, it's not the same thing. And, and if, if you need more understanding of that, please see me after the, the service. I do not want you to walk around thinking that these good habits or, or these things entitles you to the kingdom. It does not. There is no works that you can do that entitles you to the grace. The Bible says that the grace that is the saving agent comes through faith and faith alone. It comes through faith and faith alone. And, and, and certainly you can do these things. You can say, well, I'm inspired to do them because I'm a Christian. Oh, yeah. And you may be inspired to do some of it, but not all of it. You may, as time grows, your maturity and understanding may inspire you more and more to do more and more things. But whether you have been convicted or inspired to do something, whether you're actually doing it to some part, to some extent, makes no difference when it comes to salvation. You and the most unhealthiest person is in the same boat in terms of God. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. And the Bible talks about that over and over again. Over and over and over again. You're in the same boat. What you are leaning on is grace. The grace to pick up the slack where we left off. I mean, sin is so, and I had, I mean, I had this conversation with people back home in Los, in Los Angeles. Sin has just tore up mankind so bad. And even if you feel you're doing okay in this aspect, there's still a hundred other aspects that you're failing in. And truth be told, what you feel like you're doing good in this aspect, you are probably doing 50%. 
You are still lacking somewhere in this aspect that you feel that you have a mastery of. I've seen people like that. I have mastered this. Uh, in translation, I have it 20% handled. That's translation of it, right? Or, 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 or their mastery is in comparison to another human being. I've mastered this in comparison to them. So you may be 20, 30%, but you are, you, you are not 100%. How do I know? Because you're going to die. You're going to die. And when you die, that tells me that you didn't have mastery in nothing. And when you got the mastery here and all these other ones that, that may not be mastered or only 20%, the reason why we know that's true is because the construct of sin is taking you out. The Bible says that sin brings death. If you have it down packed, you would not die. You'd have no sin. Sin is this. Sin is a transgression of God's universal law. Right. So if, if and that's the only way death comes in. If, you know, there is no death in righteousness. I want you, there is no death in righteousness. Let me give you a little bit of theology. When God took on the form of the person we call Jesus, the body that was prepared for him in Christ, the Bible says that he took on the form of that of Abraham. He didn't take on Adam's form prior to sin. That's why when he was on the cross, that body died. That's why. But God, who inhabited the sinful body, did not die. Because God is sheer righteousness, and righteousness cannot die. And when God, Jesus Christ, God in Christ, died, God didn't die. And when he rose again, he put on the new body. And the new body has no sin in it. That's why he says, don't touch me, I haven't returned to my father. He had to present himself to the Father, I now have this new body, which the Bible says those who will be saved will have that body. Until then, guess which body you have? That's right. You have the body that is deteriorating. Worms are destroying this body. I go home and I see my parents, and they're getting older and older. I mean, I'm getting older and older too, but they're getting older, and they're slowing down. My dad, the military man, he's slowing down. It's, deter it's deteriorating. But the faith is what is being renewed day by day. The faith, that construct, Bible says grace will run through. This grace is the summation word of all, a glorification, sanctification, all that stuff. It will run through, and God has promised this grace if you believe in his son. It is not the same thing. I, I, I try to be as healthy as possible. Some of you know me. Some of you know me more personally than others. And you know how I try to be as healthy as possible when it comes to exercise and diet and social. Yeah, social. I'm going to tell you. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I'm going I'm to give you a little secret. Because, you know, we, we friends. We're friends. I guess at one time, <clears throat> I was at some church. And I got, you know, every year we have, um, uh, what do you call it, when, they, when, when, the, when your superiors... Uh, judge you on your performance yeah was it evaluation every year pastors have evaluation <coughs> I went about it was my turn it was there they looked at the, the list and they saw that um, my visitation was around you know if you scale of one to five it's around it's around three it's average and they was like you know maybe you should try to improve your I said yeah I'll try to improve it soon as you give me another pastor I said are you expecting me that's why I asked him I said you're expecting me to, uh, you know, now, visiting one person for a whole year is different. But as we know, there's some people who need more visitation than others. I said, are you expecting me to visit everyone at this size church, destroying my health in the process? I said, if you, if you, you know, I, yeah, that's right. That's right. Hey, you know, I, 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 wish, I, wish, I wish I had some pastors sitting here. Pastors kill themselves like I've never seen before trying so hard to exert, I mean, spreading themselves so thin. Don't have time for the wife and the family because they're doing the Lord's work. They die off early and in bad form. We bury them, we cry for them, and then the next pastor comes. I said, I said, look, I said, I said there should be one pastor for every hundred people. That, that's, that's what I said. I, I, I said that's the way. Now, if you give more pastors, we can do, we can, we can, we can up that. But there's no way, 
Because not only do you want me to visit, right? You want me to do the business part of the church. You want me to do the sermon of the church. You want me to do the counseling of the church. You want me to visit everyone. Then you want me to go to community and do the very same thing to the neighbors so that they can come into this church. Because everyone's there. I said, so by the time I'm done with no, with no full-time staff, because even my, my elders work. Well, most of them work. <laughs> I think, where's Calvin at? Where's Calvin? I think, yeah, he don't work. So. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> But my, but, but, but elders, as the people are volunteering their time, I can't take their whole time to volunteer for the Lord's work. They have, they have, they got to spend time with themselves, with their friends, with their family. That's how it is. So you give more money to us, we get another pastor, and then we all share the load. How about that? Share load, what a novel idea. But here in the U.S., that's what's happening. At your job, they are downsizing and making you work longer and paying you the same and then threatening you with, with um, termination if you don't do it. You're like, wait a second. And then as a result, your stress is going up. You, don't, you may not, I mean, you have to be even more strict with your time for health or something. And you're, you're thinking to yourself, this world's getting crazier and crazier. And all because they want a fatter check. I mean, how come they don't take a small cut so they can hire more people so everyone can share the load, and then everyone can be of a healthier uh, uh, posture. How come they don't do that? I want to keep my cut, so I'm, I'm going to keep my cut, but business is slowing, so I'm going to cut you, who's getting paid far less than me, and then make you do all the work while I'm still getting the same thing. This is called what? Greed. And, and it's unfortunate. Our, 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 our um, legal department here at the union, they are being flooded more and more with claims of people losing their job because they're not willing to work on Sabbath. It's, it's, becoming, it's becoming a fight. We, are, we want at least one, can I get one day off? One day off to just relax? Companies who know, know that you want to treat your employees very well because that produces into greater production into loyalty of the, of the oh man, it, it's a huge thing, but some people can't see that. They will threaten, it's like, it's like, um, it's like um, um, Egypt and slavery. They will, they, will, they will threaten you with something if you don't do it. Hey, I'll find someone else who will do it for two dollars. And they know that you have responsibilities, so you have to be careful in doing that. And when employment is down, even if you left, it may be hard for you to find another job. They, don't, don't, think, don't think they know all this. They know all this. They know it. They know it. We are seeking to spread the load as much as possible. I said to either spread or break the church up. That's what I said. I said then break the church up and put in one more pastor. So you know you'll t- you can would you have one member one one ma- one uh, pastor for a five hundred member church? Does that even make sense to you? I mean, if if all you want is a sermon, then that's possible. But if you want some type of ministry and relationship to the pastor, well, then that's a little different. You need to have more. I said, then, if for it to be 500, break it up. Put 250. Break that up and then bring another pastor. Do something like that. Well, that's what I told him. That's what I told him. I'm not going to say who I said that to. And, and I didn't say it with the same tone that I'm speaking now, of course. I'm talking big now, you know, but there in the interview, I was weeping and crying and be like, look. But consider this, sir. That's all that. That's right. You got to change words, change tone. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, but I, I, I was trying to say you, 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 you have, to, you have to do this. You, you cannot break down to help these people. But in all of that, even if you bear that burden, and 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 for those of you who are bearing it, I know some of you are, have a job that that's happening, and I, you know, some people are very unhappy at their job. I want to keep you in prayer. We'll do the best we can to help you out. Even if you bear and suffer that, that is not tantamount to your salvation. Don't walk around with that kind of guilt. Please do not do that. If you die off early because of some health problems that you actually could have reversed, I want you to know that God's promise is still yours. Yeah, he hadn't taken away because the hell, he he didn't do that. He did not do that. It is still yours because health is not what gives us salvation in any way, shape, or form. Now, if he's sanctifying you and you and you and he's putting more ideas in your mind and give you the energy and the, the ability to do that and you are following along that's one thing but whatever the case is whatever the case is church family it's not salvation and you know the bible says about berea <laughs> i just come to that in, in in los angeles the bible says about berea the church that it was greater 
than the Thessalonica church because they would check to see what the pastor said, the speaker says, they would check it with the Bible. That tells me two things. That tells me back even in those days, there were churches not checking what the speaker would say. And it tells me that a church with our name, that's what they would do. I want you to search the scriptures for yourself. No more brainwashing. Please don't accept morality as Christianity. I don't, you know, sometimes I don't, when I go to church, I don't, I'm like, I don't go to church to hear your morality. That's what I say to myself in my head. I don't go to church to hear your morality. I got parents who's giving me my, my morality. I have my own morality. I, what I came to hear is the power of Christ, what he has done for me in saving mankind and his love. That's what I came to hear. Now, if you're going to mix in a little morality, I understand it, but that's not primarily what I came to hear. People do that all the time, all the time. I remember when I was growing up, I used, to feel, I used to feel that I had to be a certain level of health to be saved, especially as an Adventist. Adventist, boy, the way sometimes it's, it's presented, Adventism, sometimes it's presented that, man, you got to have, I mean, you got to have your, your diet, your exercise, your what you wear. you got to ha have all of that in order, and then you're saved, and then they'll turn around and tell you, but you're not saved by works. You'd be like, what? <laughs> Are you serious right now? <clears throat> and I, I used to feel that way. It's not to study for myself. I used to feel that way, and on the burden. And I, I, I wasn't being motivated to try to handle these things by, by just uh, internal understanding. I was being motivated because I wanted to go to heaven. I don't want to burn in hell. You know, who wants to do that? I don't want to do that. So I'm moving because of works. This is my motivation. Until I found out Christ has set me free. I found that out. Made everything so much easier. Made everything so much easier. I'm still vegetarian. 99.9% .9 of the time. <laughs> but that's, that's not a matter of right and wrong. And that's not a matter of salvation. Yeah, there will be meat eaters in heaven, uh, just in case. Just in case, just in case you didn't know, it will be there. They will be there. No matter the manifestation of sin in mankind, if it is morphed into separate, whatever it, it, it is, we all have it. But grace, church, grace is what will do the saving. Grace will what will do the So, hey, do the best you can with health. I'm here to support you. I'm here to help help you. We'll try to have programs here. But trust God. Trust God. And he alone, he alone, church family, that's why you, that's why you can't get mad. I see people get mad at other people because they think they shouldn't receive blessings from God because they're not as good as they are. I mean, I'm doing this. I'm, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. How come I can't get blessed? I see them. They ain't doing this and they ain't do that. And the Lord blessed them. I'm going to tell you something. The, the, the Lord is blessing according to you. He knows exactly what you need. He knows how to work it out. I mean, that, 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 he's, a, he's a personal God. It's not a cookie-cutter God. Personal God who knows, who has numbered, doesn't even say no. He has numbered the very hairs on your head. This is number one. This is number 2,000-something. He has numbered them. And you know, and you know it's amazing. I, I guess that's hair follicle because your hair actually falls out and it grows back. For most, for most people, you get like a certain age, then it stops. But he still knows, amen. He still knows the number of hair follicles. The point that he's making, or even engraved on the palm of the, the point that he is making, that he's personal to you, to your way of thinking, the way you grew up, your understanding, your quirks, even if no one else likes you, he loves you. And he's working out to you personally. So take your time, not only to be healthy, but take your time to continue to talk to God in prayer. Pray, and pray, don't use your general prayers. Pray specifically to yourself about God. Say, God, this is how I am. Talk to him. Talk to him. Someone else may be different. You say specifically how you are. Lord, I am greedy, and you know I'm greedy. Sin is manifesting itself in me in many areas, including greed, Lord. Sometimes I face consequences for this. Lord, I, 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 want, I want you, Lord, to help me out with that. Thank you, God, for salvation. Thank you, and I bless your name for that. That's what gives me the power to even pray this prayer. But Lord, now I'm asking, even until you come again and deliver mankind, I'm asking you to help me in my grief, my lack of time management, 
way I, I, get, I, I get with people because they irritate me or I get provoked too easily or, or my lust or, 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 or maybe it's there's certain quirks in my personality. Maybe it's problems I'm having at home with my spouse and my boyfriend, girlfriend or, or my, my family, my parents. Lord, can you help me out? Can you help me out, Lord? And, and Lord, may, you know what? I, you know, I, I, keep, I hear about health, and I know the air is getting worse, and I know even in vegetables, there's pesticides. I mean, even when I try to eat right, there's still messed up stuff in there. But Lord, I thank you for the food that I have, and just help me out with that. Maybe I need some medication. I don't know, Lord. Help me out. Give me understanding. But Lord, and when you get up off your knees, you can walk in this liberty that God has set you free. Yeah, you got to feel good. Don't carry the burden around anymore. Don't do that. There's already a sin bearer. This is, this is the gospel. This church family is the good news. How many here believe the word of God? Let me see your hands. Got to believe it. Got to believe it. Study it for yourself. Berea. You got to be greater than the Thessalonica church. Study it for yourself. That's right. People tell you all kinds of things. Study it for yourself. People, people will say, you can make the Bible say anything. No, that's not true. You can make it say anything if you don't know what it says. But it doesn't say anything. It says what it says. It says what it says. People put things in there that it's not there. Say it for yourself. It's the good news. Father, we thank you, Lord, for what you've done in the person of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we thank you for this understanding in various other areas of our life, whether it's health, stress, Father, or whether it's relational, etc. But Lord, <clears throat> the greatest gift that has been given to mankind is salvation while we were yet sinners. And Lord, in, in, a, in a lifespan that we have, and we thank you for having a longer lifespan than some other generations. And in this lifespan, Father, you know, we have our ailments, and we thank you for understanding to help us out against these ailments, whether it's exercise, diet. Sometimes it's actual medication from the medical community. Sometimes, Lord, it's just a different change of location. Whatever the case is, Lord, we thank you for understanding in this area, Lord. We thank you. And we ask that you help us to, to improve. But Lord, we know that sin is still in the land. We know that we still will get older. We know that we will still die. And this is reminding us, Lord, of the sin that entered into mankind through Adam. But Lord, as we are growing weaker and weaker, our faith grows stronger and stronger. And it reminds us of righteousness that has come through Jesus Christ. And that is it's coming through our faith. And Father, we will see the product of that when you come again. We are learning in this existence of delayed gratification, things that will occur that we can't see right now but will occur later. We see it even now. How much more now in righteousness? It is through our faith that we know because you have made it clear and we have an experience with you to know that you say what you mean and that you do exist, Father. You are real. We, 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 that you will come again and you will deliver just as you promised. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. There is Hebrew class today at 4 o'clock. Shabbat shalom. Thank <laughs> you.